everyone, Todd Sheldon at Backward CFI Pro Courses, and this week I have something brand new that I want to bring to you, and that is our new video series called The Inside Look. Now, The Inside Look is going to focus on different aircraft parts that you may have never seen before up close, and I'm calling it The Inside Look because one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tear it apart and let you see what's on the inside of it. Now, most of these parts are actually designed to be uh, dis disassembled and then fixed and then reassembled. So we'll actually be able to put something, some of them back together. But a lot of them will be able just to dismantle and let you see a good working inside view of how they work. So without further ado, let's take a look today at the vacuum pump. Okay, so what we have here in front of us is a vacuum pump. So let's take a look at it. We have some stickers on this side. We have a little spinny thing here. We have some tubes coming out here. Uh, that's a very important kind of information there. Uh, we have some screws down here. We have a, a thing that says out. Uh, so if it says out, where is in? Well, actually, the word in is actually written right there. It's not actually written right there where you think it would be. It's actually written right there. And some more stickers on the back side here. So let's now take a closer look at the vacuum pump. Okay, so first off, we're going to start by just looking at some, some general things. One, two hoses. Uh, one's an any, one's an outie. So that's very important. So one creates suction, and the other one creates a positive uh, pressure or blow or a pressure that can be used for things like uh, pressurizing the aircraft cabin or uh, blowing up some pneumatic boots on a DI system for some light twins that I've flown, uh, where if I knew that the vacuum pump failed, that I would lose pressurization on inside the airplane or I would you lose my DI system. So this is a very, very important uh, system here and can be more than just a vacuum pump. All right, so let's take a look at some things on the outside here. So uh, it has a thing here that says, please don't put this device in a, a vice. <laughs> so don't put this item in a vice. And then it has a sticker here, which is actually kind of grim. And it says, warning, fly an IFR without an operating backup system for this pump may result in death, bodily injury, or property damage. Follow TC Holder's published safety warnings. TC stands for Type Certificate, in case you don't know what that means. And it's a bad thing they put this way underneath the engine cowling, way out of the view of the pilot. So it's very important. It's the reason why pilots need to know systems, but because of things like that. Uh, on this side here, we have a thing that says counterclockwise rotation. We have a thing that says do not lubricate pump. Clean all lines. Do not use tape on fittings. That's very important because this is a dry vacuum pump, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's the FAA CRS number. There is the part number. There is the serial number, and around here is the manufacturer. This is a RAPCO Incorporated uh, FAA approved overhaul manufacturer airborne. All right, so this is basically can be overhauled, and I'm going to show you why it can be overhauled. It's actually a pretty remarkable piece of device. So just to kind of get started here, we want to denote some things. And one is the sound that you hear. And I want you to listen to this. Kind of sounds like a bunch of rattling going on. And also when I turn it, listen to this. So it sounds like, to me, on this end, there's a bunch of things rattling in here. And, and that's normal, actually. That's a very normal thing to hear all that rattling in there. Uh, and it sounds here like this thing's creating suction. If I put my hand over the thumb over here and I try to kind of bogs down on me and then take it loose, it kind of gets uh, a little bit... Uh, if I put my hand over there, I can feel a little bit of pressure going in that particular one there. All right, and we're going to talk about why this is. It, uh, I've taken it apart before, and there's probably a little bit of air leaking, the reason why you can't hear it really sucking like it normally does. But let's crack this thing open and see what's inside. 
Okay, so first off, we'll need our little wrenches here. We'll take our wrench and put it on there. And of course, I've already loosened these up. Uh, so we'll just kind of go ahead and remove these. Now, uh, while I'm doing this right here, let's ask, let's talk about this thing. How many of you have ever been in an airplane in which you had a vacuum pump failure? Have you ever been in an airplane and experienced a vacuum pump failure? What about cranking an airplane and had a vacuum pump failure? Has that ever happened? Well, I have. I've actually had a pretty good bit of failures in regards to the vacuum pump. So it's not something that's extremely reliable. It is some old tech. And uh, let's get into this thing and figure out how it works. So I need to remove this little top piece here. And let's do this very easily so that way you can see what's inside. So here's what's inside here. We have a, a top and it has a little spindle in there that goes down through the middle of this spinny thing here uh, in that little hole right there and then we have uh, some orifices through here which the air can pass through and if you just follow this little hole right here that goes right out that device there all right so this is just the top piece to it it really just kind of holds a uh, uh, seals the top there. It's got a little rubber gasket there. It kind of seals the top. And again, this is where the air uh, is, is pulled around inside here. And we'll look at that just closely in a minute. And then the air gets blown out there. This is sometimes called the overboard dump or the positive side of this. Let's put this over here and we'll come back to it in a minute. So we'll put it over here. And then we'll come back to that in a second. Now let's look at the vacuum pump itself. And there's some things that we want to look at the vacuum pump to kind of see uh, where we, uh, you know, what's actually going on. The first thing is, is that we have these orifices here, which serve as a way for the air to kind of circulate and come into the device. And then if you notice here, it's a circle. Uh, and these little, these little things here uh, move in and out of that circular piece. So uh, that's very, very important. Uh, so this is a circle, but it sits inside of an oblong uh, shape. And that's very important as well. So as this thing spins, uh, these little cards will come out and they will touch. And that's what you were hearing a minute ago was that uh, these little cards here coming out and touching the outside edge. So when I spin it, you can actually see and here, them spinning out. See them spinning out like they're doing? Yeah, that's just due to the, to the centrifugal. So I spin really slow. You can kind of see the action here of them when I spin very slow. Now, it is important that I turn this thing in the direction counterclockwise because that's the only way this thing's going to work as advertised, okay? But we really want to get down to the nitty-gritty I want to know what the deal is with this. So let's go ahead and remove it. Now, when I remove it, you can see that the little cards, they're going to stay in there. I'm going to empty those out of my hand, and you can kind of see what's in there. So I'm going to put this over here momentarily. And uh, actually, let me see if I can prop it up like that. That way you can still kind of look inside of it while I am doing this. And I'm left with these items here. Now, what are these items that I just pulled out? Well, this is actually a composite form of graphite and the graphite cards that sit in here um, is why this device does not to need to be wet lubricated or oil lubricated because as this makes contact with the outside edge here inside as it's spinning around due to centrifugal force it actually drops or files down a little bit of the graphite on there and makes it where it doesn't need lubricant. So this is a dry lubricated and it's self-lubricated. It actually lubricates itself by the residue that comes off of the graphite cards while they are spinning around inside of this orifice. Okay, so that is how that works and these things are a little bit tougher from like a pencil lead so there are like a composite type uh, graphite card uh, and you can actually see it's giving me a little bit of residue on my hand and that's what's basically lubricating this device and um, these things are designed to where when they get down to a certain point uh, in wear and tear they will actually uh, break and when they break, 
they're going to come off inside of the internal piece here and they'll get lodged in here and they'll actually break and when it does it'll get lost and uh, get kind of jammed in one of these holes and this is made to actually shear off so this is a, called a shear drive and I'll show you how that works here in just a second as well now let's see what we have in here I'm gonna pull the shear drive off and I don't need to take these two bolts off here because I can kind of show you what I need to without doing that but I'm gonna reach in here and I've already loosened this up I think so but let me go ahead and put my ratchet back on it and let's take that off so uh, for those of you who have had a vacuum pump failure uh, was it do you remember when, when you had the failure was it uh, was it scary what did you do did you follow the checklist did you have an instructor on board were you by yourself uh, what happened when you had your vacuum pump failure hopefully uh, you were trained for it and you you didn't have any issues with it and you just handled it but uh, if you have never trained for it and if you don't know what it is it can actually be it could probably be the most scary failure that you actually have uh, as a pilot when you're doing these things so uh, you need to make sure that you really understand what goes on in regards to this so again what we have here is just this little uh, device here uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side over here because we really won't need this anymore for the conversation but this device here just simply hooks into here and uh, can makes the connection through this back part here and so this really just holds on to this device and connects it to the uh, to the back side here and so when this when this spins through the engine uh, accessory drive in the back it'll actually spin this here and this is the mo this is really what I was telling you about here this is called the shear drive and so when you're looking at the shear drive you can really kind of see that we have uh, some hard plastic here and metal and some hard plastic and you can see these don't quite touch there's an intentional gap in there all the way around and it's because this material here is actually designed to break at a certain PSI. So if I were to put a certain amount of torque on here, I could actually break that piece. And that is important because we want to break this off uh, here and not here because we don't want this falling inside of the engine so we we don't want parts to fall inside of the engine so we want to make sure this breaks internally of the vacuum pump and gets retained uh, with inside of our of our housing here okay so that's the reason why you can see that that housing there when it breaks we want all the parts to kind of fall outside all right so this is uh, designed to this this piece of material here is designed to be sheared off and again this is called a shear drive and that is that part of the vacuum pump and I'll put this back down here and so how easy is that that's basically the entire vacuum pump uh, uh, in itself let's see here I'll put all the parts here together with the uh, right in front of the view of the camera here and that's basically it that's what we have that's the whole entire vacuum pump and when you're working with the vacuum pump and you're trying to figure it out and to get better and understand it, these are some of the things that, and parts that you need to know in regards to how it works. So let's reverse engineer it. Let's put it back together. And that way you'll know exactly how the vacuum pump uh, comes apart and goes together. So I'm just going to, oh, I've got to put my little spacer on here. And this little spacer can only go a specific way. So I have to make sure that, that it lines up with those um, uh, with these items here correctly and if it doesn't then it's on backwards and of course it looks like it was there you go and so I'm going to go ahead and put that back up in here like this and then this piece here comes out and it goes right on here I'll make sure it fits on that cog just like it's supposed to and then we have our little nut and that goes on here and I'm going to make sure I tighten that up because uh, I didn't have it too. I didn't have it tightened up last time, and and you didn't really really kind of properly hear what this thing sounds like when it's actually, oops, when it's actually making some of the noises. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I tighten this up so that way it's really kind of an airtight uh, seal on this, and that way you can really hear what this thing is supposed to sound like uh, in regards to 
uh, it moving because it kind of makes a sound like a like a motorcycle engine. You know, whoa, whoa, whoa. And, uh, don't replicate that sound. Um, and it is very important here that you put this back in exactly like it's supposed to go. There's really no writing on this. You have to just kind of go by the way that the slots are shaping. So you have to look for the clockwise rotation. And as you have the clockwise rotation, that has to be in the direction of the clockwise rotation. So I'm going to put this back in there. And then this is even, if you take this apart, it's very important that you put it back. Now I'm going to show you something when we're looking at these cards here. If you look, let's see a minute, I may have to put my hand up here like this, but if you look, one, one edge is square and the other edge is kind of rounded. So this edge over here is somewhat rounded and this edge over here is square. So I want to make sure this rounded piece goes in and I want to make sure that the, that the shallow end of the rounded piece is always put closest uh, in the way that it's spinning. So uh, if I know that it is spinning in this direction here, which is the direction that it is spinning. So I want to make sure that when I put that shallow in, that it actually goes in the upwards direction. As you can see, that's the reason why we want to do that, because if I do it the other way, it will not make a good seal. Do you see how that kind of puts it, uh, goes up against the, uh, the item there so incredibly good? And if I put it in the other way, uh, and I'll show you what will happen. Uh, it doesn't go in. It doesn't do as much. You can see there, there's a gap in there. So that's not the correct way to put it in. So I want to make sure I put it in the other. Now, this is not going back inside of an airplane, just to let you know. For any, I, there are any comments on the on the video. There's, this is not going inside of an airplane, so we don't have to worry about that. I want to put all these cards going back in here uh, in the correct way. Uh, such a great training tool to have and sometimes I really have to eye these things to see which way that they're actually going so that goes in like that and let's see make sure that's correct it looks correct yep that's correct so uh, I always put them back in so we'll put the high end towards the front which is what that is there almost finished putting this thing back together and you can actually see it really doesn't take that long to dismantle this and put it back together. So now I have all these put back together and everything seems to be um, exactly the way we want it. Let's make sure that's correct. Yeah, that is correct. I'm gonna make sure that is correct. Yep, I'm gonna make sure all of them are correct. And all I'm just looking is, I'm just looking down at the bottom and I can tell whether or not it's actually incorrect or not. And I can see that is not incorrect. So I'm gonna flip it over. Now I can see it's incorrectly there because it's making a good fit at the bottom. And I'm going to continue to spin this around just to make sure all of them are actually incorrectly. And it appears that all of them are incorrectly, so I'm going to go ahead and put the top back on here. So I'll go ahead and take the top. I'll put the top back on. So it's pretty simple here. I just line up the holes there, and then I just uh, collapse it together uh, on those holes. And the tubes should line up correctly when I'm uh, uh, lining it back on too. And before I put it down there, I just like to look inside of the holes here to make sure that I'm lined up correctly. And if I'm not, I'll just turn it slightly before I uh, go ahead and start putting this back together. And that way I don't have to mess anything up. I want to do it correctly the first time. And uh, you won't have to do it uh, again. So I'm going to go ahead and put these screws back in here. Yeah, so the day that I took my CFI check ride and was flying back home, I had my first vacuum failure. And that was the very first time I had ever noticed anything about the vacuum pump. Uh, I know I was flying with my instructor, and uh, she was a very, very hard instructor on me, but she was very fair. Uh, and she was a wonderful instructor. Man Deep is her name. What a wonderful woman. She's. She's currently flying for the airlines over in India right now. Wonderful person. If you're listening to this, Mandeep, thank you for everything you ever did for me when I was you know, growing up in the aviation community. I really do appreciate it. I want to tighten these nuts over here just to make sure. And now you may actually hear a different sound. Oh, yep, you do. You hear a different sound now than what I did when I first had it. Listen to this. See how that sounds kind of throaty? Yeah, a little bit different in regards to that. So you can actually hear now if I do it like this and put my finger over the suction. That's what I was the sound I was trying to get to begin with. 
And here's the outgoing. A little bit different sound there. And that's what it's supposed to sound like. And this is the vacuum pump. You know, I, I've got a lot of plans into doing stuff like this. Uh, my schedule has just been incredibly busy lately, but I really love putting stuff together like this. So that way you'll know more and more and more about the airplanes that you are flying. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, again, I hope that this will help you to be able to explain this as a flight instructor or as a pilot on a check ride, and that you'll better know exactly what you're talking about when you do talk about a dry vacuum pump, which is what this is, and how the outside can be used to pressurize things and the end can be used to create vacuum pressure to run certain instruments. So what a wonderful device uh, to know about. Simple, very simplistic system. And now you know why it's got all those rattling parts in there and why it makes that throaty sound right there. I'm Todd Shellnett with CFI Pro Courses. Bye-bye.